Today we're going to look at what happens when a charge moves through a, a magnetic field. And we're just going to kind of analyze that case. So first of all, let's think about what a charge itself. When we have a moving charge, there's going to be this little mini magnetic field around it. And in the case of a, a positive charge, in this case, you'd have this kind of this clockwise motion. If this was a negative charge, it's going to be uh, the opposite of that. And in fact, it's this moving motion uh, that you get within materials that produce the domains that we talked about earlier. And even in a permanent magnet, it looks permanent, but the motion of these charges is what generates these little magnetic fields. So anyways, if you have this moving charge here, and this has a magnetic field around it, and if you have another magnet here, then essentially you have two magnets. And what happens when you get two magnets together? Well, you're going to get some kind of interaction, right? Maybe an attraction, maybe a re repulsion. In the case of this, you're going to actually get both attraction and repulsion. So if we had a moving charges going this way and they enter some magnetic field, you're going to get a force acting on it. And this net force is kind of what we're going to look at over the next few minutes. So let's just look at the equation on how this is affected. Um, there's really three factors, and you probably could derive this equation conceptually. I mean, if you think about it, uh, the stronger the magnet here, the, the greater the magnetic field is going to be, and therefore the greater the force. Um, the faster the charges are moving, then that's going to create a stronger magnetic field, and then that's going to interact with the magnet, and there'll be a greater force. The larger the charge, same thing, that's going to generate a larger magnetic field, and you're going to get a larger force. So anyways, the equation then is going to be the magnetic field times the velocity of the charge times the actual value of the charge itself. Now it is important to know that the, this needs to be perpendicular. In other words, the magnetic field and the velocity are going to be perpendicular to each other. So for example, if you look at this, if we come in at an angle here, this is moving at an angle, and as it enters this field, which is moving to the right, what we want to know is which component is perpendicular. So this amount, this value of velocity perpendicular to the field itself. And so that's what you're going to be using uh, when you make your calculation. Now you'll oftentimes see this written as BVQ sine theta. And again, that what that's doing is if you look at our picture here, here's our angle, and then this component would be the sine of our velocity. And so that's going to give us our perpendicular component. I do want you to be careful because sometimes they're not going to give you this nice angle. Maybe they give you this angle. And if they give, give you this angle, if you just kind of blindly substitute in a sine theta, well, you're going to get it wrong. In this case, if they give you this angle, you would either have to first find this and then use sine, or you could use the cosine here to get the value. Let's just do a quick example. Why don't you pause the video at this point and see if you can solve this. And then I'll come back, or you should come back. Uh, all right, so we're just going to go ahead and use our equation, F equals BBQ. And again, B needs to be perpendicular to the velocity. We're just going to go ahead and plug in our numbers. In this case, uh, I, it is going to be the sine of that angle here, so the sine of 30 degrees. Remember, the charge on a proton is going to be 1.6, 10 to the negative 19. You should have gotten 8 times 10 to the negative 13 newtons. Now, this does look like a tiny force, which you should expect because we're talking about a proton, right? It's a tiny charge. So how about the acceleration? Go ahead and do the same thing. If you haven't solved it yet, pause it and then solve it. So our equation is going to be A equals F over M, right? F equals MA, or in this case, F over M. Uh, and again, remember the mass on a proton, 1.67, 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So the answer for this should be about 4.8, 10 to the 14. So notice the magnetic field is actually, even though the force looks small, this is going to generate a, a very large acceleration. And so just like with electric forces, magnetic forces are actually quite strong, especially when you compare them to the acceleration due to gravity. So one of the things we just figured out was the 
magnitude of the force. The next thing we're going to look at is uh, the direction of the force. And this is not going to be very simple. Actually, it starts out quite hard, but once you get it, it actually is kind of simple. So we're going to use what's called the right hand rule, and I'm going to refer to this as number one. Uh, please note that we're going to have several right hand rules, and you know, the number one is just arbitrary, it's just the first one I'm doing with you. So here's the parts of our right. We're going to take our right hand, uh, you're just going to kind of lay it out flat. The thumb represents the velocity of a positive charge. The fingers are going to be laid out in the direction of the magnetic field. And then your palm is going to be representative of the direction of the force. So when we're looking to find the direction, we're just going to kind of move our hand until we get the proper orientation. And then we're just going to go ahead and look and try to find out what the direction of the unknown value is. Make sure you notice that this is on a positive charge. Now for a negative charge, you're essentially going to do the opposite of this. But um, so you'll use your right hand, you go ahead and do the opposite, and then whatever you get, that's the answer. Um, you can also use your left hand. So um, using your left hand, that will also get you to the right answer. So going back to this, why don't you see if you can figure out the direction of this. Take a moment, see if you can um, lay out your hand and figure out the direction on the charge here. So the answer would be into the page. So if you're trying to figure it out, um, it's going to go into the page. And I'm going to show you how to do this in a few minutes. So notice that we do have a third dimension here. Uh, let's come back to here. So this would be our x direction, this would be our y direction, and then our f here is coming out of the page in this case. And if we went down into the page, this would be our z direction. So we're going to have a, use a couple symbols to help us draw this out. It's hard to, you know, sometimes visualize this on a two-dimensional page. So this with a dot and a circle around it, this gonna, is going to be the notation we use when we say the direction is out of the page. Then we have a little x here. And sometimes you'll just see an x, sometimes you'll see a circle. Same thing with this. Sometimes you'll just see a dot, sometimes there'll be a circle around it. When you see an x, that means it's going to be going into the page. So here's a few examples. Uh, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and pause the video and see if you can solve these various examples here. And then when you come back, uh, I'm actually going to use a camera to do this because it's a little bit easier for you to see um, how this works. So pause now. All right, so let's go ahead and do these. Um, let's look at example A. We have our proton moving to the right, our B field's going into the page. So I'm just going to take my little hand here. So again, we want our, um, thing, our thumb to follow the velocity of the charge. So you take your hand, you kind of move it this way. It's following the velocity of the charge. Now the B field is going into the page. So right now I have it going kind of up or north. So I'm going to rotate my hand up like this. Okay. So I have my B field, my thumb following the charge. My B field's going into the page here, and notice my palm is moving up or north. So in other words, the force on this charge as it enters the field, is it going to be moving this way? That's going to be the direction of the force. All right, let's go ahead and try the second one. So the second one, uh, I now have an electron moving to the left, okay? So um, I can take my hand, right? I'm going to follow my right hand, follow the electron going this way. Um, and now it says B is going up. So right now I have it going down. So I'm going to rotate my hand down this way. Okay. So notice you can see the back of the hand. So my palm in this case is facing down into the page. Okay. Going into, right? It's facing in that direction. Um, however, remember this is a negative charge. And with negative charges, we do the opposite of what we just figured out. So in other words, in this case, the electron is going to be coming out. The push on the electron would be coming out. So I would write this as force out of the page. That would kind of be the direction. You could also write that as the positive 
z direction that would also be sufficient now remember you can also use your left hand and actually i'm going to use literally my actual hand here to show this one so my thumb would follow the charge here right and my fingers are pointing up and now my palm you can see is pointing up and out right and so that's going to give me the direction of the force up and out towards you all right let's do this one down here so down here we have our charge moving there's my hand there we go we have our charge moving this way moving to the right however notice my b field is going to the right my sorry my positive is going to the left my b field is going to the right what's going on well remember a key idea is that the velocity and the b field need to be perpendicular and if you notice in this case there's no component that is perpendicular so in this case there would actually be no force in fact, our positive would just keep on moving through. There would be no deflection, no direction of force on that charge whatsoever. All right, let's do the last one. So the last one, we now have it moving at an angle. So my positive, my thumb's gonna follow the charge moving up this way. Um, so when it's at an angle, usually what I would recommend that you do, sometimes your hand will twist and you can do it, but usually what I recommend doing is just finding the component of the B or the component of velocity, either one that's perpendicular. So for example, I'll say there's a component of my B field going this way, right? There's also one going this way, but that would be parallel. So what I care about is the component that's going perpendicular. Okay, and then we can move our hand around. So notice here, my hand's wrong. We're gonna flip it this way, oops. This way, my thumb's following the charge velocity. My B field's going this way. And once again, we have our palm pointing down. So the force is gonna be, in this case, into the page. It's gonna push that positive charge down into the page. Okay, let's go back to that example we did earlier. Remember I told you the answer and let's just go ahead and figure out how you would figure it out. If you want, maybe you can pause now and see if you can figure out the direction. So again, we're coming in at an angle here um, and I would recommend changing either the velocity or the magnetic field. In this case, it's probably easier to change the velocity. Oops, what do I got under there? So we're gonna move this this way. We have our velocity moving up this way. And again, we're just gonna take our finger. It's going up this way. We're gonna have to rotate our hand here so that it looks like this. And again, we have our B field going into, sorry, not B, F. The force on that charge is going into. So let's take a look at one last example here. And this is gonna be an interesting example. So first of all, why don't you take a moment and see if you can figure out the direction of the force. Oh, I didn't draw velocity direction. Let's go ahead and draw that out. Let's say the velocity is heading in this direction. So take a moment to figure out the direction of the force. So let's take our hand here. We have our velocity. Again, it's moving this way, right? We're gonna follow the thumb. It's gonna move this way. And in this particular case, uh, the B field's coming out. So notice my hand's gonna be pointing up this way. My palm is pointing in this direction. So as this charge enters, okay, there's gonna be a force acting on it this way, right? So let's look at it a moment later. Let's now look at it over here. So it's now deflected a little bit and um, it's been pushed down this way, right? Notice this time our velocity is a little bit different. Now our velocity is going this way, right? So in this case, um, our thumb, I'm gonna take my hand again, we're gonna follow the velocity this way. Um, the B field's still coming out. Notice the direction of the force now is moving in this direction. So our force is coming this way, like this. It's gonna start pushing it in that direction. Let's look at it a moment later. Let's say that we now have our positive down here. It's being pushed down. It's moving in this direction, south. So again, I'm gonna take my hand. We're moving, following the velocity. This is pointing up like this. This time we have our direction of the force is pointing to the left here. And so our force is moving in this direction. 
So I hope you're noticing what's happening here as I'm sketching this out. As this force is being pushed, as this force is pushing on the charge, notice in all the uh, all of these examples here, the force is always perpendicular to the velocity. Okay, and it's continually changing as it's moving around. And in fact, if you notice what's happening here, we have our charge that's entering the field. Well, what happens when the force is always perpendicular to the velocity? Okay, well, that's called a centripetal force. And what well, basically what it's doing is this positive charge is now gonna take on this little circular path here as it's moving uh, into the field and ultimately out of the field. I mean, if this was, this would take a semicircular path if it went like this. If we could somehow capture this positive in the field, then it would just continually move in a circle, right? And you always have this force, again, perpendicular to the velocity. So we're gonna go ahead and do one, uh, like a mathematical example uh, looking at this effect in the next video.